Day six, show you what we worked on yesterday. Did some more wiring. Uh, we ran all these wires, actually I ran them by myself. It's really easy. These are all the wires for washdown pump, uh, live bulb pumps, bilge pumps, I have to connect still. Uh, there's the Humminbird ethernet box right there. We connected our fuel tank sensor and the fuel tank bonding unit and I'm working on the overflows for the live well so each live well has two overflows there's a ball valve right there okay really easy to access everything in these hatches and then I'll show you this is the bow live well there's two live wells in the boat this live well has two overflows there and there and then that's the intake and I want to show you this is a 110 gallon live well tank. I'm gonna step in it. I'm six foot tall and uh, check that out. It's uh, well over my knee. It's up to like my mid thigh. So this is a serious live well. Installing the Aramar B175 high wide transducer. A lot of 4200 in there. Better to have too much than not enough. Day seven. Yesterday, mounted the steering wheel. I'm real happy with the way the console's coming out. I think it looks great. I'm gonna install two cup holders. And uh, yesterday, I also ran a lot of my uh, live well hoses. Really easy to run them under the deck of the boat. The overflows, uh, inch and a quarter, and uh, one inch for for the intakes. Uh, got a little bit more of the wiring in. Uh, the transducers in the Aramar B175 high wide transducer. Um, that was a bit difficult, but I got that in yesterday. Uh, now I'm going to get ready to install my Dakota lithium batteries for the Minn Kota trolling motor. I'm mounting my trolling motor batteries. They are Dakota lithium batteries, and I have a group 31, well, three group 31 battery trays. I'm using a number 14 by three quarter inch screw. I have a little bit of uh, silicone after I drill the hole, put a dab of that in there. I have a shop vac to uh, clean up the fiberglass when I drill into it. Um, and that is it. Those are our three batteries. Here's our four gauge wire for the trolling motor, four gauge lug. Here's the wire stripper from Anchor Marine. Makes it a lot easier when you're stripping thick wire like this. It's our lug and we're using a hydraulic crimper for this. Now this hydraulic crimper I just got on Amazon and um, my buddy Ben told me about this because if you don't have a hydraulic crimper, it's gonna be hard to get this perfect. And there's dies in here that are set for whatever gauge wire you're crimping. Uh, and one thing that I do know is that it is really important to make sure all your crimps come out really secure The reason why it's important to use marine heat shrink is that there's like a adhesive in here that you'll see come out at the end.
have this is going to go right to our 60 amp breaker for the Minn Kota trolling motor. There's our Dakota lithium batteries, three batteries there for the 36 volt trolling motor. Uh, that's a 60 amp Blue Seas breaker. This is going to the Minn Kota trolling motor. <clears throat> and right here, the negative. This is the uh, negative from the trolling motor. Uh, I use four gauge wire, uh, which is an overkill. You could use six gauge, but uh, I'd rather have too much than not enough. And we're gonna use the connect ease right here to wire these batteries in series. <clears throat> what that means when we wire uh, in series, we go negative to positive, negative to positive. That doubles the voltage and then triples the voltage. That's how you get 36 volts. If we were wiring in parallel, which is what we do on the house batteries, starting battery, if we went positive to positive, negative to negative, that keeps the voltage the same, so we still have 12 volts, but we double off the amp hours uh, to give us more runtime. So if both batteries were 100 amps, we would have 200 amps by wiring them in parallel. <clears throat>